Jenkins, an amazing build automation tool with its homepage on Jenkins. IO, for whatever reason, decided that the best language to present me with is Chinese. And even though I know a little bit of a Chinese and I tried to switch it to English, nevertheless, it keeps giving me a Chinese version of a website. But luckily, we will not need its website in order to install Jenkins on our CentOS build server. So let me remind you very quickly what we did in the previous video. We have installed Java on our CentOS build server. And by the way, I just realized that in the previous video, I used a quite small font in my console. So it might not have been fully readable or as readable as I want it to be. And besides the selection was not of a nice color. So now I fixed it. Now the font hopefully is better in console and the selection is bright green so that you see what exactly I'm pointing and selecting. So this video should be better really. And in this video, we will install Jenkins on our server and also go through the very basic steps of setting up Jenkins. And the installation process for Jenkins is super simple and it is described on Jenkins Wiki and I will post the link to this page in the description of this video. But basically all you need to do is add the repository and download the key and then install Jenkins from that repository. So I will literally take the steps from this wiki page and I will rerun those steps in my console. I will not even bother you by typing all those commands manually. I will just copy and paste as is into my terminal. So the first command is sudo wget o. What it will do, it will download the file. Actually, I do not really need sudo as I'm root already. So I'll remove sudo. wget o means output, output into this file whatever you find on this address, HTTP package Jenkins CI org Red Hat Jenkins repo. So we will get the repository and the repository file will be downloaded on our local system. Let's hit enter. Everything seems working. And the next step, and again, I will just go and copy paste this command. Feel free to type or copy paste as you wish. Both ways will work. Installation is really, really simple. RPM dash dash import we are importing the key jenkinsci.org.key. So let's do that. This command will install the key that is available on this address into the local keyring and afterwards RPM will be available to validate the custom packages that is the Jenkins package with the help of this key. So this will make the transmission and well installation of our custom package of our Jenkins package much more secure. And now that we have the repository and the key, we can say yum minus y install Jenkins. That symbol. Jenkins will be installed as a service. And in order to start it, we will use a well known systemctl command, start Jenkins. And of course, we will want Jenkins to start on every system startup, right? So if we will reboot the server, we want Jenkins to start up automatically. So for that, we'll write systemctl enable Jenkins. Now let's check the status of this new service, systemctl status Jenkins. And it says active running. That looks like everything is okay. By default, Jenkins should be listening on port 8080. Let's check if that port is busy now. So if Jenkins is working, this port should be occupied. And as you see, port 8080 is indeed busy with Jenkins and it's listening on all the network interfaces. So we should be able to reach Jenkins with the DNS name that we configured before, which is build nanogram IO. So let's go to HTTP build.nanogram.io. Do not forget to add the port number 8080. We're not yet listening on 80 or 443. And if everything is okay, you should see a picture like this. Unlock Jenkins. This is the first step of installation. Jenkins wants to make sure that you are indeed authorized to install Jenkins on this particular machine. So you're not just a random guy who randomly hit this server and now trying to install something. So what you need to do is you need to copy the value from this file into this field. And then Jenkins will believe that you're a valid system administrator. So let's do that. Let's cut that file. Oh, I forgot to copy the pass. And let's cut that file. Take that code and paste it back to the installation wizard. All right, so let's click continue. 
and seems like Jenkins is happy, Jenkins will ask you about the plugins. Well, Jenkins is a large software that supports very different styles of builds and very different platforms. So, so naturally it has a huge ecosystem of plugins, but for now let's keep things simple and just click install suggested plugins. So let's give Jenkins a few minutes and afterwards Jenkins will complete the whole installation. Hopefully we will not see any errors and afterwards Jenkins will be ready and almost configured to run our Node.js build and start configuring our CI CD pipeline. Our installation went all right. So now we need to create a first admin user and the username will be called admin password will not tell you my password and I will confirm the password and I will put my email address here. So save and continue. Do not forget that password. The next step is instance configuration, right? Here Jenkins wants to know what is its URL, what is its public URL, because it will use that URL then in things like emails, for example. So here, if you have DNS name configured, Jenkins will pick it up and display. If you do not have a DNS name yet, for example, you're just configuring server and you don't yet have a DNS record attached to that server, you can just insert here an IP address. Second thing that I really don't like is that it is HTTP, not HTTPS and that is listening on custom port and not a standard HTTP or HTTPS port. But I will fix that later. In the later videos, I will show you how to install Nginx in front of Jenkins and secure the connection to Jenkins. But for now, for the purpose of this video, I will keep this URL. Later, if your public URL for Jenkins changes, you can update this value in Jenkins configuration. So it's not crucial to insert the exact correct value right now. So let's click save and finish. And yay, Jenkins is ready. And let's start using Jenkins. Let's make sure that we can create a very simple, very basic Jenkins job. In Jenkins, the word job means a build configuration. So it's pretty much one build that you are creating for your application. Since in your landscape, in your organization, you can have tens or even hundreds of different applications that will be built with different aspects, different parameters, there might be easily hundreds of jobs in Jenkins. But for our case, it will be super simple. So we'll create just a simple hello world job right now and make sure that it works. So what we will do is we'll click new item here and we'll give it a name. I'll call it hello world job. And I will make it a freestyle project. There are several styles of the project and the simple one is the freestyle project. And let's click OK. Now this control panel that allows you to configure the details of this Jenkins job, it might look a little bit intimidating if you haven't seen it before. But do not worry, it is really quite logical and quite simple. And once you have configured a couple of jobs, creating a next one will be quite easy. I will just go down all the way down up to the build section. And here I will click add build step. And as a build step, you can choose what exactly this build will be doing. So for example, it can execute Windows bash command, execute shell, invoke ant, ant as a build system or another build system called Gradle, etc. So there are several options that what you can do during your build. And what I will do is I will execute shell just like we did before. I will write a simple shell script. So let's start with a hash bang bin bash to declare which shell exactly we want to use for the script. And now let's say echo hello world. This is all that our job will do at this point. Now let's save our job. And you will see that if you go back to the dashboard, you will see here is the job. Here will be the list of all the projects, all the jobs that you can build in your Jenkins instance. And the simplest thing that we can do right now is to try and execute this job. This job is not doing anything right now. It's not downloading source code. It's not building our Node.js application, not downloading any NPM dependencies, but that's all right. We will come to that in the later videos. Let's run this job. It says build scheduled and if you refresh the page, you see that this little bubble turned from gray to blue. It means that the job was successful. We can go to this job and click number one in the build history block. That will give us some details about the build. And let's go to a console output and see that everything went well. So the job has started. You see some output here. Hello world, finished success. 
Congratulations guys, you have just installed Jenkins and now you're one step closer to a complete full-blown continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. And in the next videos we will see how to configure slightly more advanced Jenkins job. So how to make Jenkins pull code from GitHub and build your application, download the dependencies and deploy that finally on your application server. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked that video, please subscribe to my channel and put that little like. It will motivate me a lot to build new content for you guys. And I hope to see you again in the next videos. Bye.